Now we are going to cover how to add new buttons in Vim screen. So these buttons can be anything related with entering a push receipt or entering coding information or changing the uh, the PI vendor in PO and all those things. So here you can add custom components. So the first important thing that you have to do is to create a report program or screen that you want to execute. So it can be something like suppose you want to execute the uh, the, the goods receipt screen. So it can be MB01 or Migo, uh, whatever you want. Now you want to prefill some data in it so that so you might have to call a BDC because you want to make sure that the user has to enter the minimum of information so it, they can fill it fill in the delivery note which is the invoice reference number and some of the PO PO number from the invoice screen so you might want to build a custom BDC then. The, the next portion is create a report that called the above report or screen using function module. So you can put a function module like a BDC and then you can create a T code using the above report. So in this case, you, we want to make sure that we get all the information from the Vim screen and is passed into this new screen. Then in the, the the fourth portion is creating a check function model in case you do want to show the option to some users only so this is very pretty useful because uh, i'm just giving an example suppose you want to get the post invoice uh, uh, button so you want to only give the post invoice button uh, to to the users who has mido authorization so if they don't have mido they shouldn't see so and similar to if suppose someone wants to change the PO, if he doesn't have the change PO authorization of ME22N, those buttons will not will not be shown. So using this check function model, you can filter those things. Okay. Now you go to after creating all these four things, you go to our Vim configuration, and then you do. Uh, process called configure BDC procedure and add the T code. So the BDC procedure is one is a number that calls the T code that you have created. So I'll just take an example where I want to do a uh, goods receipt through Migo with all the data prefilled, uh, like the delivery note and the PO number as well as the movement type. Once it is done, I'll add this T code to this BDC procedure. Next, we will be configuring processing option with the above BDC ID. So this is pretty useful where you are going to say what are the different options that you are getting to get through this BDC ID. Then you have to create, to, you have to configure the processing types. Then you are at user process options by selecting appropriate process type. Example, no GR. So if the if the invoice here, the, the process type, as we have discussed in the previous portion, is the Vim exceptions. Okay. So if there's no GR, then we need someone to enter GR. So it can be post goods received through MP01 or MIGO. Then we copy existing options and paste accordingly. So this is just a synopsis. We'll get into the screenshots in the next portion. So the first thing you have to do is configure to add process uh, buttons to frame process. Okay. So here, if you see the we have created the function models and all those things we have already created. So the we are starting from the maintain BDC procedure. The first thing you go is go to the Vim configuration and go to process configuration, document type configuration, process configuration, and then go to maintain BDC procedures. Now here we have already something configured. So we just click on display framework, coding configuration, and then here, this portion, the parameters, you don't need to really mention anything. Uh, just copy it. And the most important thing you have to do is here. Here in the BDC definition, you mentioned the transaction code that you have uh, configured. Okay. And that, that will do all the trick. Okay. Now, later on, after that, you have to do is maintain the processing options. So you go to the... Uh, uh, 
img for open text and you go to document type configuration process configuration and then you go to maintain process process options after you click on maintain process option you copy an existing entry which is supposed to enter coding for framework PO and now you put the BDC ID you created earlier and change the description so here you display framework current framework coding uh, information and here you can change the option button text to display framework coding configuration okay so that in the in, in the testing it will show properly okay after this you go to select the process type where you want the new options the process type as we said is the vim exception so insufficient grpo if you have this process currently here we want to add this this uh, this configuration to uh, pos which is framework pos and doesn't have a, a coding information added so you want to add this then you go to the copy existing options and paste accordingly so we have already configured some and you just copy and paste it and here you just mention this you change the if you notice in the previous previous screen the options were 2714 and 2728 we copied it and we changed it to all display coding information from actor and if you see here you have uh, we have also added the check function module to make sure uh, the correct rule only can see these buttons because it's not good because we don't want to build a process where someone gets a button and when he clicks he says oh you're not authorized so we are eliminating that process where you get an erroneous button so we will give you the button only and only when you have the security to do something so it, that causes a lot of less confusion and uh, and also is uh, transparent for the yeah for all the users and it creates a lot of less it incidents and the business is happy because they and if something is not available or someone the security has taken the authorization away he will not have this button so it's it's pretty transparent and it's slick and you can control the buttons based on the authorization and you don't need to do anything extra it's based on code so whenever the security has team has assigned you some uh, some transaction code you will get it uh, automatically so you don't have to do anything extra and it's completely driven by the security so there's nothing extra needed for this